Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs, written by Judy Bonnet and drawn by Juan Bonnet. We were all sitting around the big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Mom was squeezing oranges for juice. Henry and I were betting on how many pancakes we could eat. And Grandpa was doing the flipping. Santa Fed or something flew through the air, headed toward the kitchen ceiling, and landed right on Henry. After he realized that the flying object was only a pancake, we all laughed, even Grandpa. Breakfast continued quite uneventfully. All the other pancakes landed in the pan, and all of them were eaten, even the one that landed on Henry. That night, touched off by the pancake incident, at, breakf at breakfast, Grandpa told us the best tall tale bedtime story he'd ever told. Across an ocean over lots of huge bumpy mountains, across three hot deserts and in one small ocean, there lay the tiny town of Chew and Swallow. In most ways, it was very much like any other tiny town. It had main street lined with stars, houses with trees and gardens around them, schoolhouse about 300 people, and some assorted cats and dogs. But there were no food stores in the town of Chew and Swallow. They didn't need any. The sky supplied all the food they could possibly want. The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything that everyone ate came from the sky. Whatever the weather solved, that was what they ate. But it never rained rain, it never snowed snow, and it never blew just wind. It rained things like soup and juice, it snowed mashed potatoes and green peas, and sometimes the wind blew in stones and hamburgers. The people could watch the weather report on television in the morning, and they would even hear a prediction for the next day's food. When the town's people went outside, they carried their plates, cups, glasses, forks, spoons, knives, and napkins with them. That way, they would be always pre be prepared for any kind of weather. If there were leftovers, the people took them home and put them in the refrigerators in case they got hungry between meals. The menu varied by the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was coming down. After a brief shower of orange juice, little clouds of sunny side up eggs moved in, followed by pieces of toast, butter and jelly sprinkled down for the toast, and most of the time it rained milk afterward. For lunch one day, Frank Fox, already in their rolls, blew in from the northwest at about five miles an hour. There were mustard clouds nearby, then the when shifted to the east and brought and baked beans, a drizzle of soda finished off the meal. Dinner one night consisted of lamb chops being becoming heavy at times with occasional ketchup, periods of peas and baked potatoes were followed by gradual clearing with a wonderful jello setting in the west. The sanitation department of Chew and Swallow had a rather unusual job for sanitation department. It had to remove the food that fell on the houses and sidewalks and lawns. The walkers cleaned things up after every meal and fed all the dogs and cats. Then they emptied some of it into the surrounding ocean for the fish and turtles and whales to eat. The rest of the food was put back into the ark so the soil would be, rich, be richer for the people's flower gardens. Life for the town people was delicious until the weather took a turn for the wasps. One day there was nothing but Gorgon Sola cheese all day long. The next day there was only broccoli all over cooked. And the next day there were Brussels sprouts and peanut butter with mayonnaise. Another day there was pea soup fog. No one could see 
where they were going and they could barely find the rest of the meal that got stuck in the fire. The food was getting larger and larger and so were the portions. People were getting caught in violent stores blew up frequently. Awful things were happening. One Tuesday there was a hurricane of bread and rolls all day long and into the night. There were soft rolls and hard rolls, some with seeds and some without. There was white bread and rye with whole wheat toast. Most of it was larger than they had ever seen bread and rolls before. It was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors. Roofs were damaged and sanitation department was beside itself. The mess took the walkers four days to clean up and the sea was full of floating rolls. To help out the people pile as much bread as they could in the backyards. The bugs picked out of a bit but just stayed there and it got stale and staler. There was a storm of pancakes one morning and a downpour of maple syrup that nearly that, that nearly covered the school. No one could get in because of its weight, so they had to close the school. Lunch one day brought 15 inch drifts of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches. Everyone ate themselves sick, and the day ended with a stomach ache. There was an awful salt and pepper wind accompanied by an even worse tomato tornado. People were sneezing themselves silly and running to avoid the tomatoes. This town was a mess. There were seeds and plump everywhere. Sanitation department gave up. The job was too was too big. Everyone feared for the, their lives. They couldn't go outside most of the time. Many houses had been badly damaged by the giant meatballs. Stores were boarded up and there's no more school for the children. So a decision was made to abandon the town transport. It was managed to, manage to survive. The people glued together the giant piece of stale bread, a sandwich of style with peanut butter, took the absolute necessaries with them and set sail on their rouses for new land. After being afloat for a week, they finally reached a small coastal town which didn't work on them. The bread held up surprisingly well, well enough for them to build a temporary house for themselves out of it. The children became, began school again, and the adults all tried to find new places for themselves in the new land. The biggest change they had, they had to make was getting used to buying food at the supermarket. They found it odd that the food was being kept on shelves, packaged in boxes, cans, and bottles. Meat that had to be cooked was kept in large refrigerators. Nothing came down from the sky if it rained or snow. The clouds above their heads were not made of fried egg. No one ever got hit by a handball again, and nobody dared to go back to chill and swallow to find out what had happened to it. They were too afraid. Henry and I were awake until the end of Grandpa's story, and I remember his goodnight kiss. Next morning, we woke up to see snow falling outside our window. We ran downstairs for breakfast and ate a little faster than usual. She was still sledding with Grandpa. It's, it's Funny, but even as we were sliding down the hill, we thought we saw a giant pat of butter on top, uh, at the top, and we could almost smell mashed potatoes. The end.